I had Greyhill Incident on my wish list for quite some time. At first I played a demo for an upcoming indie horror game called They Are Here a while ago which was really fun and spooky so my intrigue for UFO type horror games was peaked. Now I'm purely here to tell you the story or rather I'll try my best to. I'm not going to give my opinion on this game or whether or not you should actually no don't buy it. Not yet anyway. Wait for a sale it's £20 and I felt like a mug for spending that much on it. Whilst they nail the atmosphere the voice acting the character models just seemed well, dead. Voice lines overlapped. By the way, I found a gun in that crash squad car back there. Great. Let's hope I don't Be have to quiet use it. And sneak around. Bob, I swear. Please stop. Uh, maybe someone on the black stop and, and the story was, well, you'll see. It's a shame because most people in the reviews were genuinely anticipating this game. But before we begin, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN have just started their summer campaign, and with that comes another great deal. Three years of Atlas VPN for only $1.83 per month, plus three months extra. With over 750 servers around the world, connection to Atlas VPN servers is incredibly stable and lightning fast, which means if you're a gamer playing online competitively or just for fun and need a reliable connection, then this is ideal for you. As well as that benefit, you'll also be safe from things like being DDoSed or even things like avoiding a lobby full of bots. Of course, it's not just used for gaming. As a sports fan myself living in the UK, I find it extremely difficult to watch any US sports. So I just hop onto Atlas VPN, fire up whatever US based streaming service I use and can watch anything, basketball, baseball and American football. This is also really good for using in conjunction with Netflix where you can turn on your VPN and use it to access Netflix servers around the world. Different servers of course mean different options. You can use it on multiple devices and Atlas VPN can also block any malicious links, ads and trackers and it also notifies you if and when someone is trying to steal your data. So make sure you take up this awesome three year deal because right now you can get Atlas VPN for just $1.83 per month, plus three months extra with a 30 day money back guarantee. So be quick and get your deal by clicking the link in the description or looking for the pinned link in the comments section below. It's the early 90s in the very small town of Greyhill. Greyhill has been experiencing strange incidents and phenomena, which have themselves given birth to conspiracy theories and people who are convinced that they are being visited by extraterrestrial beings, which also led to the village becoming intrigued about supposed real life abductions and invasions. The town's experiences of these incidents were being covered up by the local media and the government. The game starts with a woman called Amy using a radio to speak to her neighbours, stating that someone was in their backyard the previous evening just standing there next to their dog. Amy's husband went out with a gun, but the someone had disappeared along with the dog. Amy says that she's gonna file a complaint or I guess a police report. The man on the other end of the phone, Brandon, a Vietnam War veteran, says that he doesn't trust the police, the government or any other authority for that matter. He says that Amy should just let the town's neighborhood watch sort it out. Amy replies that she wants it to stop as it has been going on for several weeks and she's afraid especially since several animals have also disappeared from the area. Brandon tells Amy that someone named Brian will visit her on his tour of the neighborhood. The call finishes with Brandon telling Amy not to call the police as they'll all end up in a psychiatric ward. The game's aforementioned protagonist, Ryan, is a former professional baseball player whose wife has just left him. He lives with his son, Henry, and their dog, Max. One morning, according to Brandon, Henry went into the forest one morning with Brandon's young daughter, Rachel, and Henry heard a strange noise and investigated. Rachel ran away, but Henry stayed. Brian mentions how Henry has been acting strange ever since he returned home. The family's computer screen is just showing static. Going downstairs, Henry is sure enough is acting pretty weird. He's just lying in front of the TV, himself watching more static. Henry doesn't tell Ryan what he saw in the forest and tells him that he doesn't know where Rachel went after she ran off. Checking Henry's room, Ryan hears their dog Max barking loudly in the backyard. Going outside, there's someone rattling around in their shed and then a bright blue light emanates from outside. Finding the door locked from the inside and breaking it down, he finds no one in there at all. Whoever or whatever was in there is long gone. Max the dog sees a blue light in the cornfield and completely ignoring his owner, he strolls off into the cornfield. Inside, the TV then magically springs back to life and a news report plays. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Lunatics and conspiracy theorists claim to have seen a UFO. The minority tries to convince other people that the small green aliens are real. The government has checked into this incident and has announced that this UFO, fortunately, is just a weather balloon. 
This movement that you'll see in a few seconds is just a reflection on the lens of the camera. There is no reason to concern. And don't forget to be aware of the small green man in your backyard. Your Mr. Broker. Ryan then gets a call from Brandon on the neighborhood watch walkie-talkie. He says that something is wrong with Joe Parson, a farmer. He had called Brandon and sounded terrified. He was working on the field near to Ryan's home, so Ryan leaves to go and check what's going on. He finds the tractor just sat there in the field, almost as if it's been completely abandoned. What's more, the cows in the field appear to have been skinned. On the tractor, Ryan finds a tape recorder with a message from Joe saying that they, being small and grey individuals, are trying to break into his tractor. This message was followed by a strange clicking sound. Seeing a small blue light in the distance, Ryan walks over and it's his brother Bob's cat. The cat has strange things attached to her head. Ryan takes the cat back to Bob's caravan. Bob boarded up his caravan so Ryan finds his way up through the roof, dropping down into the caravan. Bob is there, obviously a fully fledged conspiracy theorist with tin hat and everything. Bob claims to have been abducted by aliens himself at one point, even writing a book about his experience. But naturally he can't find anyone to publish the thing. On a side note, Bob was sectioned, committed, and was described as being a dangerous, foolish lunatic. It also mentions that he pulled out a probe that they put inside him. Ouch. Bob inspects the cat and says that he thinks she was abducted too, which explains the growths on her head. Bob then tells Ryan that he should board up his own house because it's now dangerous in Greyhill. Not only that, but Ryan should also make himself and wear a tinfoil hat, along with making one for his son Henry too. This will prevent the aliens from going into their brains. Ryan then also wraps the antenna of his radio in tinfoil so that aliens cannot hijack and block their communications with one another. Just about to leave the caravan, Ryan and Bob see the monitors going crazy, and in the field something lands there. It's a bleeding UFO, and a number of small alien creatures emerge. Fearing for Henry's safety, Ryan goes to return home. Returning via the cornfields, hoping not to let the aliens see him, Ryan sees the very thing he didn't want to see. Henry is being abducted by aliens. Ryan hears the comforting sound of the police, but the police car ends up crashing. Investigating, Ryan finds a file on the seat regarding this exact expected alien invasion in Greyhill, meaning that the authorities and the government were very much aware that this was going to happen. Ryan also finds the cop's gun, very handy in the event that Ryan needs to blast away some Martians. He returns to his house to find Bob sat on the porch. Bob explains that the aliens will abduct everyone in the village, not just humans, but animals too, for experiments and samples. Ryan needs to go and get nails from another resident's house in order to board up his home, so off he goes. He has to avoid little grey men, but eventually grabs the nails and returns to Bob. Ryan then receives a call from Brandon. Aliens are trying to get inside his house. Brandon tells his daughter Rachel to hide under a bed in her room and tells Ryan that he needs help. They hear the windows smash, and then the transmission gets cut off. Ryan then leaves to go and save Brandon. Not long after this, Ryan gets a call from the officer whose car crashed earlier, Officer Apone. He's injured and trapped in a barn and says that he doesn't remember much as he just woke up there. He indeed confirms that the government know everything, including that the invasion was taking place that very evening and that plans were already in place to cover it up. The officer tells Ryan to gather as much tin foil as he can, at least five rolls. Then the call cuts off. Ryan eventually makes his way to a diner, which he passes through. He finds a note from Amy stating that they're in the barn in front of the diner. Going to the barn, Amy says that in order to save Henry, they can use this biplane in order to try and get close to the UFO that took Henry. Problem is that Amy's partner Matt is needed and he's off grabbing some stuff. Ryan, being the errand boy, needs to go and find Matt and tell him that the plane is ready. What's more is that Amy never actually called the police to Greyhill. Matt has locked himself away in a safe as he's scared of being probed. So Ryan finds the combination, lets Matt out and grabs some fuel for the plane. Like clockwork, Apone radios Ryan. He says that the aliens got him, bad, and they put something in him. Apone got a probed. He ran for it and went to the nearby church, so Ryan heads there. Inside, he finds the priest, Father Graham, preaching up a storm, thinking that the aliens are the coming of Jesus and his angels, and he then ascends to heaven. Not really, he gets abducted. Ryan finds Apone, he's near death and is breathing his final breath but he's alive just long enough to tell Ryan that a man called him and sent him to Greyhill, which explains the mystery of who called Apone. The dying officer tells Ryan that the mystery man will know what to do, as he's done this before, and to call him. Apone then expires. 
After admiring the humongous probe that was shoved up a pone's ass, Ryan tries to find a working phone. He finds a phone, but it appears to be inactive. The phone lines are down. Avoiding yet more little space entities, Ryan finds a telepedestal, but needs a fresh circuit board as the current one is fried. He rather conveniently finds one in a nearby shed and fits it to the pedestal. He returns back to the phone and calls the number a pone gave him. After explaining the situation to the mystery man, he tells Ryan to do something. To cover his entire body in tinfoil and to let them abduct him. And Ryan does indeed cover his entire body in tinfoil. Looking like an aluminium fox molder, Ryan spots Amy and Matt's plane flying, presumably towards the UFO to help Henry. Realising that their plan with the plane is almost certain to fail, he tries to contact them, but there's no answer. Setting across the field to try and find them, he finds a few more UFOs just parked on the field. Bob calls and Ryan tells him that he's going to go to Brandon's house, as was the original plan before Ryan ended up doing chores for everyone else. He also says that when they get Henry back, they'll drive out to Nevada to meet up with the mysterious man. Ryan then hears from Brandon. After hearing Brandon's rather colourful update, Ryan arrives at the house. Ryan realises that all the abducted people from town are on the same ship being experimented on. He hears a scream and realises Rachel is still in the house. She reveals a bit too much that her dad Brandon thinks Ryan is basically a little bitch, but nonetheless Rachel does the classic little girl thing and runs off. They had previously heard a car, people likely passing through for fuel. But Ryan, in search of Rachel, finds the car abandoned with no owners there, meaning that they too were abducted. Ryan hears a scream coming from a nearby cornfield and sets out to find Rachel. Ryan also hears Max the dog in there too. He finds Rachel's teddy bear and gets annoyed, saying that he'll let them take him. Still not finding Rachel, Ryan sees another blue light inside a barn and determines that Rachel must be there. Ryan is contacted again by Bob. Bob says he's kidnapped an alien. Ryan sneaks around the barn and eventually he gets inside. He sees Rachel lying there passed out. Bob then drives straight into the barn. Ryan puts Rachel on the floor of the caravan and it does seem that Bob indeed has kidnapped an alien. Ryan then tells Bob to leave and take Rachel to Nevada with him and he'll get abducted and gain entry to the UFO. And sure enough, Ryan steps out of the barn and gets duly abducted. Then there is a cutscene which shows Bob driving to Nevada with Rachel, Max the dog, his cat and I'm guessing the alien locked in the back to go and meet the mysterious man. Bob says he's going to write another book in the hope that this one gets published and the game then ends. And that's literally it for the Grey Hill incident. I don't know if there's going to be a DLC or a sequel. It was kind of disappointing how the game just ended there. An alien UFO exploring section would have been really cool where Ryan has to save his son and their neighbours. But I guess for now at least we don't know what happened with Ryan there was no payoff and there was no resolution to all the effort put in throughout the game. The story was extremely straightforward in terms of it just being an alien invasion in a sleepy rural town, but there wasn't really any mystery as to why the government just let it happen. We don't know who the mystery man was or why he sent a pwn to the town. The only obvious thing I can think of in regard to the mystery man is that Nevada is the home of the extremely top secret and mysterious Area 51. Maybe the mystery man is a government whistleblower, who knows. But hey, if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to support and leave a comment down below with your thoughts. But for now, take care and I'll see you in the next one.